Now, how do we improve our soil? Well, the Yeoman's method um, that was, like I said, developed by the likes of um, a few people, um, famous um, English farmers like Newman, gentleman farmers, I will call them, um, like Newman Turner and um, Fred Sykes and Sir Albert Howard, all of those very early organophiles, as we'll call them, back in the 30s and 40s, you know, really powerful observers of landscape and maintainers of, um, of fantastic pasture in the pre-World pre, uh, War II era, pre-industrial -fer pre fertiliser era. Um, them and then your own Louis Bromfield, this sort of progressive approach of having a shallow, compacted, drought-prone topsoil and then using um, some sort of soil test and remineralising it to um, bring back the uh, excavated minerals um, from agriculture. Um, because, you know, agriculture as we know it in, conventional, in a conventional sense and in a lot of cases in organic agriculture is an extractive industry. It's no different to mining. Otherwise, why would you have to bring back all of this fertility from, the, from elsewhere off the site? Um, there's, no, there's nothing closed loop about this stuff. It's a, it's a, it's a sieve. So we have to do that. Then we find where the hard pan is because there's usually uh, some sort of area where the soil is compacted in the soil, um, in the strata rather. And once that compaction reaches 300 pounds per square inch, roots do not penetrate. And so we have to actually um, get through that, open it up, so that plants can reach their physiological potential, which is, you know, what we're trying to do here. We do that um, at, the, at the start of the growing season, and then we remove the livestock for four to six weeks, sort of until the onset of flowering. At that point, the plant has reached its maximum biomass, both above and below the ground. And then, as Yeoman said, we, um, we stem the reproductive urges of the plant. <laughs> yeah, what a terrible thing to do, to have done to one. Um, and what that does is it causes a bit of a root depth. Death, good night. And uh, <laughs> it's all right. You can leave. Um, <laughs> Um, it causes a root death because, especially in uh, valuable in bunch grasses, in perennial pastures where we actually, um, the, 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 the plants are quite old or can be quite old, and that, um, that uh, eating down of the, of, the, of the top of the plant causes a big root death, a, um, root pruning, if you like. And then that becomes um, food for the soil, for the soil microorganisms which are now being supported by the minerals that have been put back on and also the uh, removal of compaction which has opened up the amount of air, water and light that's available into the soil as well. So aerobic organisms in the soil proliferate and um, chew down this stuff and turn it into something wonderful called humus. Yeah, that's all right. Which holds a lot of its own weight in water and um, allows plants to uh, go to depths that they couldn't go to before. And we do something else. We actually, like I said, we increase the organic matter. And if we do that, which is very simple, 1% increase of, cut of um, organic matter in our soils equals a fifth, on one hectare, two and a half acres, equals a 57 tonne reduction of carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. Now, so that means that if you were to increase your carbon, your, your organic carbon or organic matter content on one acre of soil, then that would be all of your carbon dioxide emissions for one year. And you know how much that would cost you? If you were to pay a credit for that, that would cost you about $15 because that's all it costs to do. Yeah, okay. Um.